Honourable and respected brothers and elders, according to the Islamic month, we've now entered into Rabi'ul Awwal. Okay, so many of us maybe received a text message or maybe some of us found out on the TV. If I say I received a, you received messages, okay, whoever tells somebody else that the month of Rabi'ul Awwal has started, Jahannam is haram on him. This we refer to as Hadith Mawdu'a. Iska koi asal nahi hai. There's no basis of this. It makes you think, isn't it? Okay, in, in terms of the months of the year, the most, the, the, the most noble of months is which month? Ramadan. If you don't get Jannat on telling someone about Ramadan, then why Rabi'ul Awwal? Now you see, what happens is, is that people get emotional because they say, Aap sallallahu alayhi wa was born in Rabi'ul Awwal, so therefore it's Mubarak. Why wasn't he then born in Ramadan? The answer to that question is, ke, Aab sallallahu alayhi wa did not need Ramadan to make him ba barakat. He was the barakat for the month. <laughs> so, anyway, Rabi Awal has a special place in the life of the Muslim because according to the ulama, ittifaq, meaning that there's consensus on this, except for one particular scholar who says that Aab sallallahu alayhi was born on the 10th of Muharram, but that's bay usul, bay buniyad as well. Aab sallallahu alayhi wa was born in Rabi Awal. We're not in Rabi Awal now. Anyway, so... What I thought is interesting, inshallah, or something of importance, is that I wanted to talk a bit about the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Kind of give you guys a bit of background about his life, his birth, a little bit about him, because generally, unfortunately, many of us are unaware of the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And many of us, if you want to look about Islam, you switch on the media, you're going to see something online, and that doesn't represent, you know, what his life is. You're going to see a lot of negativity. You're going to see a lot of things which. We don't agree with as Muslims. So it's, it's part of our Iman that we try to educate ourselves a little bit about the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's from the family of Quraysh. Who are Quraysh? Quraysh is that family that basically, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his father was named was Abdullah. His father was Abdul Muttalib. Whose father's name was Hashim. Whose father's name was, so he goes like this, Muhammad bin Abdullah. Bin, Abd, uh, bin, uh, bin Abdul Muttalib, bin Hashim, bin Abd Munaf, bin Qusay, bin Kilab, bin Murra, bin Ka'ab, bin Lu'i, bin Ghalib, bin Fahr. So that individual Fahr, right, which is the great, great, great grandfather of the Prophet Sallallahu his children and his nasal became to be known as Quraysh. So they had obviously quite an extensive family. That was all part of the Quraysh family. All of the ch- people of Quraysh were leaders of their of their time. They were all leaders of their time and specifically Fahr himself was a leader of his time. Where he he was the first person from their family, from Quraysh to come to Makkah, to the Haram. And what he did was when he became a leader, he brought all of his family and he settled everybody within 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 the Haram. Okay? And then they later on became the custodians of the Haram and they started looking after Haram. Who are we talking about here? Fahr. The great, great, great grandfather of the Prophet. That's where the, I'm trying to show you where the link started from. Because Rasul, he came from the awlad of Ismail alayhi salam. Fahr did, but we, you know, the, the chain of narrators up to that nasal or nasab is not very authentic. I mean, up to Ismail alayhi salam it is, but beyond that there's questions. So anyway, khair, we're not here to discuss that, we'll sidetrack. My point of mentioning was, where did, where did the Prophet where did his roots found within particular, the, the, within Makkah? Because if you trace back, you know, you can say that even nowadays, right, is if you look, at, if you try and trace the lineage, you'll find that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family lineage, he looks, basically, he's part of the original Arabs, which come from Yemen. It's a long story, but like I said, this is all part of history. Khair, let's move on. But then anyway, the, the grandfather of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, he, his name was Hashim. And he was part of the family of Banu Hashim. So he's part of the wider Quraysh family, but under the Quraysh you had Banu Hashim. Ab Salasam was part of the Banu Hashim, so his great grandfather was Hashim. With Hashim, subhanAllah, it's a long bit of a long story, right? He he was the one who started this whole business trip to Sham and, and also to Yemen. The Muslims, the Quraysh at that time, the Arabs of that time, they used to go to Sham in the summer and Yemen in the winter. That's why we hear the verse of the Qur'an, لِإِلَافِ قُرَيْشِ إِلَافِهِمْ رِحْلَةَ الشِّتَاءِ وَالصَّيْفِ Allah's talking about the Quraysh and how they do business trips to in the summer and the winter. In the summer they would go Syria, Sham. In the winter they would go to Yemen. 
So he was the one that kind of started this, Hashim did. So he was the one that made it more prevalent. Because if you go to Makkah now, right, there's nothing that grows. It's a very derelict place. It's in the middle of nowhere. There's no agriculture. I mean, it's very, very desert barren land. You just see pahar everywhere, mountains, jabal. And it's a very, very harsh climate. So for people to adjust in that lifestyle is very, very tough, very, very difficult. So Hashim was the one who started these business transactions, which basically brought a lot of affluence to the Arabian Peninsula. Because naturally with business, you guys can tell me more about this, right? Naturally. <laughs> when, there's more, when business starts in an area, it starts flourishing, right? So Hashim did the same thing. He, before Ika Dukka person would go, but he was the one that really kind of, it was uh, this whole going to summer in, this, in Sham and winter into Yemen. So he was the one that kick-started that. As a result, there was a lot of affluence, a lot of attention, a lot of interest started building up within the Arabian Peninsula. So then what happened was, was he was on a business journey once, Hashim was. He was on a business journey. And he was on his way to Sham and he, he stopped over. And subhanAllah, he, he, met, he, he got married to a woman from the Bani Adi tribe. From the Bani Adi ibn Najjar tribe. Okay? Her name happened to be Salma bint Amr from the Bani Adi tribe. So he married her. I mean, look how many Bilataka lives in the You're on journey, you meet a woman, you marry her. But khalas. I know I'm going through this Musi, but I wanted to get my brother married. They called us out. We had to send family out there to go and talk to the family. Amne Samne. Oh, by Skype, because I'm on there. Lucky bando. But no, you still had to do two, three tickets. And then, punch, punch, kilo, net, che, che, tokri, and matai. And I'm thinking, bruv, the car's supposed to be simple, man. But anyway, them days he was on business. He sees, uh, he sees obviously now uh, this particular, the, the woman and the family connect, they talk, they communicate. Mashallah, he has his nikah. And then what he does is he, he stays for a short amount of time. He stays, stays for a short amount of time. Approximately a little while, they say about one, one or two months he stayed. And then she got pregnant. He left, went to do business, but then he passed away at Gaza. He was never to return. She had successful childbirth, she had developed a child. The child who she gave birth to, his name was Shaiba. Shaiba. This is Hashim's son, Shaiba. Many years had passed. Many years had passed. But what happened was, Shay- uh, Hashim had a brother called Muttalib. Hashim had a brother called Muttalib. They come to know that, hold on a second, you have a child in, in the Bani Najjar. He's uh, Bani Adi ibn Najjar. You have a child there from your family. So they was shocked that we never knew that our brother got married en route. You know what I mean? It's like, come to tell you, our brother, you know your brother got married en route and he's got a shot. Serious. So Muttalib went and he went to Bani Adib and Najjar, met the family of, met the clan and said that my brother passed through, he got married and they said, yeah, this is his son, Shaiba, age seven. So he was shocked. So in them days, it was a custom that they would send, the men would kind of take control of the kids. They would go look and then when he brought him back into Makkah, very young, beautiful young lad, seven, eight, seven years old, very, you know, very handsome, very, you know, beautiful face. And people started saying, oh, is he the slave of Muttalib? Shayba, that's his name, oh, is he the slave of Muttalib? What does the word slave mean in Arabic? Anyone? Abd. So you see how the name is, Abdul Muttalib. That's why his name is not Abdul Muttalib. The grandfather of the Prophet, Abdul Muttalib, that's not his name. His name is Shayba. Abdul Muttalib was the nickname was given. Because Muttalib went to get him, and as he walked into Makkah, they said, wow, look at a beautiful young lad. Oh, they said, he's the slave of Muttalib. He's the slave of Muttalib. So he got to be known by this name. Otherwise, his name was Shayba. Sorry. I'm trying to explain that Aap Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where did his, where did his link come? How did it all fall? I'm telling you the background, the behind the scenes was happening. Anyway, Alhamdulillah, Abdul Muttalib grows up and he became a leader amongst his people as well. He became a very prominent, eminent person. MashaAllah, Abdul Muttalib was known as Fayyad. Fayyad is someone who's very, very sakhi, very generous, someone who gives lavishly and so on. And that was kind of his nickname, what he became known by. But that name, Abdul Muttalib, he couldn't shift it. He wasn't referred to as Shayba, now he was known as Abdul Muttalib. It was a name that stuck with him to the end of his days. He nevertheless had 10 sons. Ten sons. He had daughters as well. He had ten sons. From that was Abdullah, which is the father of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Who then, obviously, the story goes on even further. That Subhanallah, what happened was because Abdul Muttalib is they had a dream, right? He had a, he Abdul Muttalib had a dream that he was uncovering the well of Zamzam. There was a tribe within the Arabian Peninsula called Jurhum, who was a clan of Makkah, Jurhum. 
And what Jurhum did, they covered up the well of Zamzam. So it, it was obscure. When Abdul Muttalib had a dream, he saw an uncovering of the, of the well of Zamzam. He went there, uncovered it, and he'd be like, whoa, you just uncovered a Turaf, a previous uh, thing, a relic of the past. He became noted and acceptable amongst these people because that dream was inspired to him. So people regarded him as someone very senior. As a result, you know this Siqaya, People would come from outside, they would give them water, farid. Do you know guys know what farid is? You cook a pot of food soup and you chuck bread in there, wheat. It becomes like what we would refer to as kichri. So he would feed that to the people, give them drink, nabid, like dates which are soaked in water, water to drink. He became very prominent amongst these people. So there was a lot of competition that people wanted to take over his position. So he said, Allah Ta'ala gave me this position. Allah gave it to me. And as a sign of my acceptance, if Allah gives me 10 children, and because he's given me this, this sharaf, this izza, where I'm able to look after, be the custodian of the Kaaba, when I have a child, the 10th one, one of them I will make zaba for the sake of Allah. Bit of an odd thing, but that was how they used to do in the olden days. His most beloved child who he loved most was Abdullah, who was the father of the Prophet Anyway, what happened was they did like this Qur'an Dazi, because he had 10 boys, he had a number of daughters as well. So they put names on the arrows, he pulled out one arrow, the name Abdullah came. And now Bichara, he's feeling upset, this is, I've got, I've got to slaughter him. So he went to, they went, the Quraysh said to him, look, forget this custom, I'm sure there's a way out. Gui gunjash, do no gunjash. You know, gunjash, take some gunjash somewhere. So what happened with Bichara, he got a bit perplexed. He called this one Mahi, this Susaya, and he asked, what should I do? She said, repeat the process again, and I'm sure Abdullah's name won't come out. Someone else's name will come out. So he pulled the name out again, Abdullah. Abdullah. Fourth time, Abdullah. Fifth time. And they're shuffling these arrows around. Ten times, Abdullah. And then what happened was, subhanAllah, they, they, they mutually decided that in Fida and in Badla, you can give ten ten camels in place of Abdullah. So if you give a hundred camels away, a sadqa, you're absolved of your duty. So what he did was, to save not slaughtering his beloved son, he had nine others, but he loved Abdullah. He said, I'm not going to slaughter him. I'll give out a hundred camels a sadqa and I'll keep my son. This is why Rasulullah used to say that I am the son of two people who were slaughtered. Because Ismail was what? Going to be slaughtered by Ibrahim. And he said, my father was going to be slaughtered by his grandfather. So Allah saved him, Allah saved him. I'm the product of these two people who were about to be slaughtered. Anyway, this is, I'm giving you a bit of brief background. Time is not going to permit because we want to start Salah a bit early today. I'm just trying to give you a bit of introduction to the life of the Prophet ﷺ, how it all started, and then he ﷺ, was born from Abdullah, a long story, but inshallah we will continue this and we will talk about it next week. He was born in Amul Fil. We'll touch on that next week, what is Amul Fil, a bit about his life, and inshallah try to accustom ourselves. Why are we learning about this? I want to inspire you guys. Seriously, let's read a little bit about the Sira. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we're all guilty, but we know very minimal when it comes to the life of the Prophet ﷺ. It's not sufficient just on Rabi Allah to give out a few places of Javel and sing a few nuts and say I'm an Ashik Rasul. That's easy. Anyone can say that. How much do we know about his life? Let me ask that question. How many of us even knew that his father's name was Abdullah, grandfather Abdullah, grandfather Hashim, Abdul Manaf, Qasai Kilab, Murrah bin Ka'ab, bin Lu'i bin Ghalib bin Fahr? How do must know? How many of us? Who did he get married to? What was the name of his mother? Amina bin Abdi Manaf bin Wahab bin Abdi Manaf. How many of us know that, for example, now where he was born, where did his father die, where did he... Bay, there's a whole history. We'll carry on with this, inshallah. Allah give us tawfiq and inspire us. SubhanAllah wa bihamdi. SubhanAllah wa bihamdi. Allah wa bihamdi. Allah wa bihamdi. Allah wa bihamdi.